All right, let's look at a third example here of simplifying rational expressions. So pause, take a minute, copy this problem down, and then follow steps along with me. Okay, so as we look at this problem, so we have variables, we have exponents, we have numbers. We don't have anything that we can factor. Okay, so we said the first step was factor, and it's factor where we can. So if we can't factor, we're going to move on to the second step. So factoring is not possible here. So just move on to the second step. The second step we said was listed as list the restrictions. So for the restrictions, you have to make sure that we are listing out restrictions for each variable that shows. Previously, we only saw one variable. Now we have two variables. We have an X and a Y. So that means we have to list the restriction out for X, where X cannot equal, and what Y cannot equal. So looking at the denominator, we see that X, there's an X here with no parentheses. That means X cannot equal zero. Same thing with Y. There's a Y here with no parentheses around, just a Y. It doesn't matter what the exponent is, just the variable. There's no parentheses. That means Y cannot equal zero. So those are our two restrictions. Now our third step will be to simplify and cancel. So let's go ahead, let's try to simplify and cancel. So we could simplify what's inside the parentheses first. So we're gonna ignore the parentheses raised to the third power. We'll deal with that in the last step. Let's simplify inside the parentheses first. So first part, so I'll rewrite these parentheses because we know we're gonna still have them. 15 and 20, what's the greatest? Something that can be divisible by both 15 and 20. Five, five, five goes into 15, five goes into 15 three times. So that's gonna be an numerator, five goes into 20 four times, so that's the denominator. Now let's look at the variables. See if we can take away or cancel out any of the variables x to the fourth in the numerator, x squared in the denominator. That means we could take two of the x's away from the numerator. So if we had four, we take two away, now we're left with x squared in the numerator. And the x squared in the bottom goes away. y in the numerator, y to the fourth power in the denominator. So let's see. We have one y on top, we have four y's on the bottom. We could take one of those four away, that means we're left with y to the third power in the denominator. So I have three y's left on the bottom. So our simplified version here is going to be 3 over 4 x squared y to the third power still raised to the third power on the outside there. So that now that the inside is simplified, we could take care of this to the third power. So anytime we have parentheses raised to an exponent, that exponent is going to be applied to every single term within those parentheses. So 3 is going to be raised to the third power. So we have 3 to the third power. We're going to have x squared raised to the third power. We're going to have 4 raised to the third power. And we're going to have y to the third power raised to the third power. So that exponent a cube is going to be applied to every single term in there. What do you do? You multiply. If there already is an exponent, multiply those exponents together to get the new exponent. Or we simplify it out. 3 to the third power equals 27. 2 times 3 would make it x to the sixth power. 4 to the third power is going to be 64. 3 times 3 would make this y to the ninth power. Now, once we've taken care of all those, this is our simplified version. We've simplified this, and that is our answer.